You're an Get the out of here. I find you enormously abrasive. I feel as though you don't have the capacity to listen. Could you imagine what kind of a partner you would make for me? Are you guys out of your friggin' minds? So I think the chances are I'm gonna invest in that. Do you have anything better to show us today, or is this the top of the line? If you were in one of my business school classes, I would spray you down with water, and every time you say I don't know, I'd hit you with an electric cattle prod. All right, I'm not really here, but every year, 40,000 companies, 40,000 founders go through months of work and effort to try and land a spot in front of those guys. It's a nasty application process. It's months of paperwork and interviews on auditions, all to get in front of these guys for like 10 minutes to pitch your company. But companies still do it because it pays so well. $207 million have been raised by Shark Tank companies so far. We got a deal. We have a deal. I'll offer you a million dollars to 25%. Two million dollars. You only ask for one, I'm gonna give you two million dollars. got a deal. Ah, uh, I'll take that off. offer. Done. But it's easy to find a success story of so many companies that have gone through Shark Tank. I've been wondering, if these guys are actually good at investing. I've been wondering if the ROI is there. How many of the companies that they bash all the time go on to prove them wrong and whether their shark instinct is actually correct. So we did it. We spent weeks looking at the cold hard data of hundreds and hundreds of companies that have gone through 295 episodes of Shark Tank. We analyzed everything from their products to how much money they asked for to their valuations and of course their outcomes. We found some shady stuff like producers trying to get equity just for appearing on the show. We found that half of the deals that were broadcast as yes, I'm investing in you don't actually close and they never get any money. So this is Company Forensics, the real numbers behind Shark Tank. So these 40,000 companies apply to be in Shark Tank every single season. And they'll do this by either filling out this online application form or by waiting, standing in line for long hours for a live audition. And we're gonna lose most of those companies along the way. Maybe their business isn't consolidated enough. Maybe they're bad at pitching because they haven't watched any of our videos. Or maybe their product is useless or maybe they're just boring. More often than not, making it to the show is not so much about the product, it's about the personality. I mean. It is about the ratings a little bit after all. But after this massive purge, we're gonna land on a group, on a small group of a few hundred companies. And those that make it here, they'll need to fill this thing. This is a 17 page application kit. And they're gonna spend months on audition tapes and answering emails from production and having endless video calls. And we're gonna end up with just 158. 158. This batch will get to pitch the sharks. And all you have is 10 minutes, 10 carefully timed minutes to pitch your company. I asked for, um, I think it was $10,000. Yeah. Wow. I was sleeping through the beginning of this presentation because I thought I'm you glad. were no sales. I I'm awake now. <laughs> Get I feel crush this. I feel the $160 price point is a problem. But it's not over here. It's not over yet. You won't see all of them. If you pitch them and your discussion is boring, you're not going to make it to television. And out of those, only about 52. 52 companies are gonna get a yes, but not all of them are gonna get the money. We'll get to this later. First, I wanna thank Chart Mogul for making today's video possible. We have been using their platform at Slidebean long, long before this YouTube channel even existed. I've been recommending it to people and now I'm getting paid to do so. Chart Mogul is a tool for SaaS companies to track their revenue. I genuinely think it's the best tool out there. You can plug data from virtually anywhere and it will analyze it for you. It'll give you reports on your MRR, on your churn rate. It'll calculate your lifetime value. It lets you filter your users by country or by the campaign that brought them in and look at the metrics for each one of these groups separately. The most crucial company decisions that we've made at Slidebean have been supported with the data that we get from Chart Mobile every day. And best of all, it's free for early stage startups. Any company that's under $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue can sign up for free forever. If you have more than $10,000 in MRR, you can still use the code in the description to get a $600 credit of your first year in Chart Mobile. So thanks again to the Chart Mobile team for sponsoring today's video on so many of our videos. Now back to the story, obviously what you see on television is not what actually happens. Each session takes about 45 minutes, some up to two hours, but obviously you don't get to see all of that because who watches two hours of anything these days? Three million dollars for the entire company. Let's do it. Let's We're done. Right. Let's do it. Oh but why would anybody want to go through this? It sucks. It sucks so much that founders that pitch the sharks actually have to go on a one-on-one -on -one session with a licensed psychologist just to deal with the experience. Hashtag avoid lawsuit. Just being on TV is part of the reason why these companies do it. I think it's a terrible name. It's hard to spell, hard to remember. If you gave me a spelling test, it would take me 10 times to really get it. 
I'm out. If I want to send flowers to your grave, I have to wait six days. And I think you died here today. In this case, the sharks were wrong. This company knocked it out of the park. Millions in sales, enough to make the sharks regret it. And that's not the only case, of course. Take Lena and Steve, for example. Steve Sashin and Lena Phoenix manufactured this modern take on the traditional warache shoe. And they called this the zero shoe. And the stakes were really high on this one. So does this mean that you don't really need the sharks? Do they bring any value or is it just the airtime? After all, it's not as if they don't make mistakes. 57 shark-backed companies have gone out of business. Some of them quite spectacularly so, like the breathometer. We're at a 0 0.04 right now. That would be legal. Does it tell you if she has bad breath too? I mean, it was a good idea. This device that measured the alcohol level in seconds so that you don't drink and drive, they agreed on a $1 million check for about 30% equity. But then this happened. The FTC forced the company to refund all their customers because of these accuracy problems, and the sharks were obviously embarrassed. So I wanna go back to this question. What is the real value of the sharks themselves? And for that, I wanna go back to Lena and Steve's story. This episode aired February 1st, 2013. It was, I think, the 14th episode of the fourth season. And the show was already established. Six plus million people were watching it, and they loved every minute of it. O'Leary's heartbreak, the product, the founders, everything. The script said Mr. Wonderful for O'Leary, but I'm not really gonna call him that. That's a Mr. Wonderful look. In the weeks after the episode aired, the company boomed. Zero Shoes sold 20% of the previous year's volume in just seven days. The website crashed. With the airtime alone, they had made more than they had asked from the sharks. Zero Shoes only kept growing. The company grew 88% during the pandemic and even landed a deal with another investor. By 2021, the product was sponsoring Olympic athletes and ranking $13 million in annual revenue, all without the help of the sharks. And that is really just one of many success stories. The other one is this thing. Justin Wang founded this company and, well, it boomed. I'm here today to ask for $500,000 for 1% of my company, <laughs> Lark. <laughs> His valuation made Lark the most valuable company in Shark Tank's history. After all, years later, Lark did reach those $50 million, but not with the sharks. The deal didn't close, but appearing on TV was just enough of a catalyst to reach those $50 million in sales. And it happened to Lark, it happened to Sierra Shoes, and to many other participants. There's even a term for it, and the production company knew it very well and tried to monetize it. As an entrepreneur, appearing on TV means millions of viewers, even better than having your own YouTube channel. This is the Shark Tank effect. On the other side of the screen, there could be investors and entrepreneurs who are just plain old customers who fall in love with your product. So so for a while, after going through all of this grueling process, if your company made it to the season, you had to pay. Regardless of whether or not you raise money, production company expected companies to pay 5% equity for just these few minutes on TV. For comparison, there have been 18 deals in Shark Tank with that much equity. It's no small amount. Again, even if the sharks rejected your idea, you had already lost 5% of your company. Oh, but wait, there was an alternative. If you, by any chance, didn't want to sacrifice 5% equity, no problem. Alternatively, you could just pay them a 2% royalty on your future sales forever. But these absurdly high commissions aren't the worst of it. You had to pay this regardless of whether or not your pitch made it on TV or not. There are a fair share of companies today, alive, that still have to pay a royalty to Shark Tank. But of course, there was a downside here. Better prepared companies just didn't want to sacrifice the equity. So finally, in 2013, Mark Cuban said, screw it, and demanded that the production company stop charging this money. And his rant proved correct. Just take a look at how much the viewership and the deal amount changed for the following two seasons. But this is really the first of many charts that we've prepared today. So I am going to move to an old but familiar part of our studio. Okay, but in all of this, where do the sharks come in? It's surely not just about changing the rules or making it on TV. After all, these guys are millionaires, some of them even billionaires. So if they get their hands on your product, they can make millions of dollars for you, with you. But what does it take to draw their attention? First, it might be a category thing. Now in 13 seasons, 1,187 companies have been on Shark Tank and appeared on TV. And in that time, there have been a total of $207 million in deals from the sharks. Food and beverage products reign supreme, second goes to healthcare related products, and then fashion. Then it also helps to know how much money you should be asking for. Here's the average deal handed out in 13 seasons of Shark Tank, the lowest and the highest. 
And if you ask anything more than that, they are literally gonna laugh you off the stage. And then there's the equity and how much equity you should be giving out. This is a lot. And when you give out so much, you should expect a good payout. So you could call this the perfectly balanced Shark Tank deal that sharks would say yes to. But even so, this show continues to impress me because a yes doesn't really mean anything. Let's go back to those 52 companies that supposedly landed a deal. That means that at least one of the sharks said yes, but it's not over. 52 companies got a yes, but only about half of these companies actually get any money from the sharks. On average, only 27 companies close out the deal per season, and it's all due to paperwork. There's this very little process called the due diligence, because after all the handshakes and the drama and complex negotiations, the sharks and the founders must analyze the company's paperwork. This is called a data room. All this paperwork is packed into what we call a data room. And next week's video is all about how to build one. It's looking at this data room where things sometimes don't work out. Usually it's because of the founders. 90% of the deals fall through because the founders believed that the conditions weren't really good for their business, even though they took the deal on TV. I thought this was against the rules, no? There's no rules. If I'm not sitting waiting, I want this deal. Damn. I'm here. I'm with you. And then some deals have taken so long to negotiate that the episode has aired already. So they already got the benefit of being on TV and they can just kiss the sharks goodbye. But anyway, this is it. 27 companies per season. So landing a deal should be a life-changing thing, right? If not, then why are the sharks even here? We shouldn't forget about one thing. These guys aren't ordinary business people. This is so not my space. <laughs> That's business, Barb. I would like to bring in another shark with me. There have been a total of 32 sharks that have appeared at least once on the show. Even this guy who was the most boring shark ever, so much so that Mark Cuban actually replaced it in season two. But the core six and the other guest sharks have one thing in common. It's the one reason why this show works after all. They all really know how to make money. And that's the allure here. People want their money. Hell, people want to be like the sharks. So despite the journey, the hardship, and knowing that the deal might fall apart, there's still that sliver of hope that Shark Tank is a good thing for your business. And as much as I really wanted to prove them wrong today, I couldn't. Let's analyze all the companies that have gotten a yes on air and then failed to close the deal. There are 349, and here's how many of them still exist. Those that close the deal are even more interesting. So having the sharks on your side is a good thing after all. Here's how many of each of the sharks' investments on Shark Tank still exist. But it's when we compare that to other sectors that this becomes more impressing. For example, startups. We know that around 80% of startups will fail within the first five years. So let's leave the startup world and talk about business in general. And adding this statistic, here you can see that 50% of companies fail within the first five years. And this is of course not encouraging, but it's just how small business works. So how does Shark Tank compare? Pretty incredibly, but let's go even a bit further. Even those companies that didn't close the deal do great. And I want you to sink on this for a moment. This show has a better success rate than most industry standards. The drama, the brutal admission process, and the O'Leary guy, it's all worth it. And this is why Shark Tank exists. And that's why those 40,000 companies are willing to face that admission rate of 0.4 or 0.2% for a chance to make it on air. All of that to hear the sharks say, I'll do the deal. And make their businesses blow up.